right, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Happy Mother's Day. All right. So we're glad that you're here this afternoon with us uh, celebrating the special day of mothers. And before we're going to continue, uh, we welcome all of you here in Christ Commission Fellowship. And if you are here for the first time, of course, we would love to connect with you. And if you are joining us online, wherever you are, we also uh, welcome you. Welcome to Christ Commission Fellowship. And please don't forget to, to connect with us uh, because uh, we do love to connect people, uh, whether physically or online these days. Okay, so can you look at your neighbor and tell them, welcome. I'm glad that you're here today. And if they are mothers, tell them, happy Mother's Day. All right. It's a special day for the mothers. And of course, if you are here for the first time, please don't forget to fill out the uh, first-timers form because we want you to be part of our main ministry, which we call Discipleship Group or D Group, Small Group Ministry. That's our main ministry here in CCF. So please be part of one. We have all uh, we have D groups all over the places in the city, even outside the city. We have online D groups, so you have no excuse. Okay, if you cannot come physically, we have online D groups. Okay, and of course, uh, before before anything else, we would love to invite everyone for our upcoming seventh anniversary. Right. Seventh anniversary on June 4. First Sunday of the month, we will have our seventh anniversary celebration, and, and our theme is abiding in that glorious presence, in the presence of God. So please invite your friends, your loved ones, your family members, okay, because we're going to celebrate the, our, uh, the goodness and faithfulness of God. Uh, actually, our, our, our anniversary is, the, the, the actual is the month of May, but we just celebrate it every June. All right, so you can now start telling your brethren happy anniversary, <laughs> okay, because it's actually our anniversary already. All right, and uh, I think we don't have, oh, of course, after the worship service today, we will have our fellowship, we will celebrate the Mother's Day, and we'll have some snacks out there, we have coffee, okay, and on uh, anniversary day, we also have our uh, fellowship uh, meal together. All right, are you excited for that? And uh, today, oh, for the sports ministry, uh, this coming Friday, uh, they will have, I think, volleyball, right? It's going to be volleyball. Oh, basketball. It's going to be basketball this coming Friday. So please invite your friends as well, and uh, especially the younger ones. I think the singles will, will join us on, or maybe on the volleyball. But if you're a sports lover, so please join us. And in the coming summer days, we will have biking sports ministry as well, okay? So please uh, just continue to subscribe and uh, follow our Facebook page for the CCF, CCF Edmonton Sports Ministry, all right? But before we're going to move on, we will, of course, this is a special day for our mothers. We would love to honor them. We would like to uh, recognize them for, for being mothers. You know, it's, it's not easy to become a mother, all right, when I was a child, when I was uh, still small, I, di I didn't realize how hard it, it is for my mother until I see it firsthand with my wife becoming a mother. All right, so let's uh, don't neglect them. Let's appreciate them. Okay, let's recognize them. Let's honor them. Children, always honor your parents, your mother, okay, because their love is so selfless. Their love is so sacrificial. All right? So because of that, we would love all the mothers to stand up. Okay? All the mothers, please stand up so we could recognize you. And we will give you simple token from our children, from our next-gen ministries. Come over, next-gen ministries. All right. We have also mothers up there. Of course, there are uh, kids over there. They're giving flowers. All right. Okay. Happy Mother's Day.
Who else? There are still mothers over here. Okay. For the mothers joining us online, uh, whoever is doing the online streaming, you can send the virtual flower, okay? <laughs> For our token. <laughs> All right, there you go. Are there still more mothers without flowers? All right. Happy Mother's Day, all mothers. Okay. And if you're here, if you're not biological mother and you're a spiritual mother, you could also have a flower, okay? So if you are a spiritual mother, okay, so you can stand up. So we will also give you flowers, all right, for the spiritual mothers. There you go. Still more? Okay, I think we're all of the mothers have their own flower. The mothers to be, of course, Kasalion. All right. <laughs> Okay, thank you, kids. Let's give a hand to our Next Gen Ministry. And of course, to the mothers. Happy Mother's Day once again. All right. <laughs> you know, without our mothers, it's, it's impossible that we will be here today, okay? So we can have a uh, long list of appreciation, I guess, for our mothers. So children, uh, or for all of us who are grown-ups, we still have our mothers, uh, please appreciate the mothers, your mothers, okay? Give them a hug, give, the, give them a call if they are not here with you, okay? And I, 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 I read a quote this morning. Uh, it says that, uh, what is that? <laughs> In in the world, you are a mother, but in our family, you are the world. Uh, I read that over, over the internet, and I, my, my daughter, Jessie, we, we made a card, and I wrote that in the card, <laughs> right? So, in the world, you are mothers, but in your respective family, you are the world, okay? So I, I could not imagine without mothers at home, it's so hard, right? So. It's like no one can compare to the sacrifice, to their service, to their love, to, to the time that they will really give you uh, sacrificially despite of being so busy at home. Okay, they are super women. Do you agree with me? Mothers are super women. Okay, and uh, husbands are, it's okay next time because uh, next month's gonna be Father's Day. All right, and of course, if you're here for the first time, do we have first timers? First timers, do we have first timers? Welcome, welcome. We welcome all of you, and if you're here for the first time, please uh, stay with us during our uh, snack fellowship. Okay, and another one thing, uh, because we will have our uh, anniversary celebration on the 4th of June, uh, the Exalt team is calling for for if you, if you love singing, okay, and you are part of a D group, you are, we are calling for volunteers 
outside the, the Exalt Ministry for the choir, okay? So we will have a simple choir, just one song this coming uh, anniversary, and the Exalt team, uh, the, the singers, they will be part of this choir, and it is also encouraged for, for all of you who are not part of Exalt or the worship team, but you are part of a D group and you love to sing. I know many of you here love to sing, and you have wonderful voices, so please uh, join the choir. Uh, later on, after the worship service, we will have our first meeting for the practice. Okay? Are you okay with that? And are you excited for the anniversary? Yes, of course. So what's our series once again? Do you still remember? No regrets. And this is our fourth message for this series. Okay? And do you still remember the messages for the previous Sundays? Okay, live a fulfilled life, and then we have learned that we are just stewards of what? What have we, uh, have we been talking for the past uh, one, two, two Sundays? We are stewards of our time, all right? And we are stewards of, of what? What else? What? Our treasure, last Sunday. We have heard that we are just stewards of treasures that God has entrusted to us. Time, treasure, and of course today, we're going to talk about being good stewards of our influence. And the the last topic for this is we we will talk about stewardship of our talents. Okay? But before we're going to start, let me pray first. Okay, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you, God, for this beautiful day that you have given us, Lord, to gather together here as your people, as your children. Thank you, God, for this privilege of uh, worshiping you, this privilege, Father, of knowing you more, oh God. And thank you, oh God, that we are here so free to, to come into the throne of grace, oh Lord, with your holy people. And Lord, as we worship today, as we listen to your word, Father, I pray that may you pierce our hearts, O oh God, with your words, open our spiritual eyes, O oh God, so that we will see the things that you're about to reveal to us, O oh Lord. And as we, as we recall, as we uh, uh, think about the, the past messages that we have been learning, I pray, O oh God, that may you give us this desire, Father, to, to really do something out of it, O oh God, in obedience to you, Father, to please you, to glorify you, O oh God. And Lord, we pray that as you, you, you speak through me, Father, I pray that uh, you, you supersede my preparation, O oh God, and I pray that your glory alone, Lord, will be magnified. And I pray for your people, even if they are not here physically, if, even if they are just joining us online wherever they are, Father, I pray that they will embrace the truth that they are about to receive today, Father. And as we leave this place, oh God, we will continue to apply what we have been learning and we will continue, Lord, to represent who Jesus is in our lives, oh God. Lord, we pray that you will bless the rest of our time. We thank you also, Father, for the mothers. Thank you for, for bl- uh, uh, blessing us, oh God, with wonderful moms in this place, Father. And I pray that may you continue to bless them, may you continue to to use their lives, O God, to become channels of blessings, Father. And I pray that they will also continue to become mothers, that you want them to be mothers that uh, influence their children, the the, the people that surround them, O God. I pray that may you continue to, to shine in their lives, O God, so that the people We'll see your great love, your sacrificial love through them, Father. And Lord, we pray for the rest of our time. I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will fill each and every one of us, O oh God. And we just continue to, to worship you in everything, in every ministry that is actively involved here, in everything we do, Father. May it be a worship to you, O oh God. Lord, we bring back all the praises, all the glory and honor unto your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day, okay? Happy Mother's Day. So no regrets. This is our, our series. And uh, speaking about uh, influence, okay? Speaking about influence. What comes to your mind when you hear the word influencer, especially this digital world today? Influencer. Are you an influencer on social media? 
Okay, are you an influencer on Facebook, uh, YouTube? Uh, what is this? Uh, Friendster? Uh, is this Friendster? <laughs> Instagram? I don't know what are these. Uh, Twitter? Okay. So, are you an influencer on social media? You know what? Uh, nowadays, there are lots of people, they do a lot of things in social media like TikTok, right? Tic Tac, whatever is that. <laughs> as long as they will influence people, and of course, the motivation behind what? Money, of course. They want to earn money. But you know what? Whatever your motivation behind, you will influence someone, right? Believe it or not, you will. Okay? You know what? My, our daughter in, in YouTube, uh, one of her influencers right now is the Ryan's. Uh, Ryan's World. Is that Ryan's World? The, the YouTube uh, channel in, in YouTube, right? Ryan's World. And this, this uh, little g guy there is so influential because you know what? Nowadays, he, he has these toys, uh, spe uh, uh, customized, specialized toys for him, a name after him, right? You know that, Ryan, Ryan's World. And of course, for teenagers, who are your influencers? K-pop. <laughs> right? K-pop, the Korean, what's, what's the pop in, in, in K-pop? Popsicles? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> K-pop, they call it K-pop. I, I, I don't really know what is that. But, you know, teenagers, they love K-pops, right? And, and whenever they go, they sing songs that we don't even understand, right? <laughs> because they have been influenced with, with these K-pops, okay? So, you know, what, what I'm saying here is somehow, all of us, we, we have some influencers all over the place. And as, as what I have said, uh, digital world, social media, right? And, you know, all of us are also influencers. Do you agree? All of us are influencers, okay? You, 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 whether you believe it or not, all of us are. But you know what? I can attest it to myself that I myself is an influencer, okay? You know, my daughter today, She's so corny when giving jokes because I have influenced her <laughs> in giving corny jokes. Remember, imagine 24 7, she's with me. Okay, my, my wife will just ignore me all the time because, you know, this corny jokes again. But my daughter, she's always happy. Wow, amazing jokes, Papa. And of course, she got it from me. Uh, you, don't be surprised one day, okay, when we, she will hear you uh, uh, cracking corny jokes. It's from me, all right? But you know what? As I have said, that all of us are influencers. As followers of Christ, the truth is, we are saved by God to be influencers for Him. Do you agree? We are saved by God to be influencers for Him. Okay? That's why our message for today is, be an influencer for God. And you know what? This influence, we are just two words of this influence. It is God-given ability for us to influence people. But as followers of Christ, we influence them for who? For God. And that's our topic for today. And I pray that as we listen to, to the message of God, okay, God will speak to us, to all of us, and that we would go home and remember this one point in our message today. Be an influencer for God, that we are to be an influencer for the Lord. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell them, be an influencer for the Lord? All right, so be an influencer for the Lord. And our main passage for today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 13 to 15. And it says there, can we read this all together? One, two, three, go. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Okay? So you're familiar with this passage, right? We have been... Uh, in this series before, the, the Beatitude series. Why? Because this, is, this happened during the Sermon of the Mount by Jesus. He was talking to his disciples and his followers. And this is commonly known as the Sermon 
on the mount. And we have heard the Beatitudes for last year for this series. And we talk about this, being salt and light. Do you still remember the Beatitudes series? You are the salt and you are the light. And you know what? This Beatitudes is by far Jesus' longest explanation of what it looks like to live as his followers and to serve as a member of God's kingdom. We have heard from, from the, 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 the verses prior to this, okay? Blessed, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the merciful. And then Jesus continued, as you have learned th- those, uh, the blessedness, Jesus reiterated, you are the salt of the earth. You are expected. You are expected to show those blessedness. Okay? Why? Because you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. In many ways, Jesus' teachings during the Sermon on the Mount represent the major ideals of the Christian life. We are expected. We are expected to manifest those characters of Jesus in the Beatitudes. And of course, you are the light of the world. Okay? Jesus made it clear that his followers should be noticeably different from other people as his followers. Why? Because as followers of Christ, we must and we should make a difference wherever we are. We are the light of the world, higher standard of conduct. That is what it means to be the light of the world, the standard of love, the standard of, of being selfless as, as who Jesus is. Jesus himself, he is our main example, okay? And Jesus embodied that being selfless, becoming loving. We have heard from, from uh, the heart prep of Brother Randy a while ago that he died on the cross because of who he is, all right? And we, as his followers, are expected to be the light of the world, to exemplify who Jesus is. And that is why we must be influencers to this world. So if you have a TikTok account, <laughs> if you have a YouTube channel, what are you going to do? You must be influencers for the Lord, okay? Just uh, uh, make me your manager, okay? For if you, have, uh, <laughs> if you have one million subscribers, I'm just kidding, okay? So influence, we must be influencers. Now, when you, when, when you talk about influence, what comes to your mind? What does influence mean? When you say influence, it is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone, especially the power to cause changes without directly forcing this, those changes to happen. It is natural. You influence someone, you don't force them to follow you. You just do your thing, they will follow. That's influence, right? Parents, mothers, fathers, Can you see your influence towards your children? When they grow up, you will see, okay? What's your influence over them? And somehow, as I have said, all of us have influence, whether positive or negative. We always have influence, positive or negative. As what I have said, I influence my my daughter so much in, in, in funny ways, all right? But let's be very, very careful because the negative things, they will copy that, okay? And as followers of Christ, the same thing, okay? We must be positive influencers. Now, do you know that you and I, with regards to our position in Christ, as his followers, are ordained by God to be a positive influencers for others? We are ordained by God to be positive influencers for others, whether you like it or not. Maybe you're thinking, I don't believe in that. I'm a nobody. I'm just an ordinary person. As long as you have Christ, you are influencers. You are an influencer for the Lord. Now, have you ever thought of yourself as an influencer? Have you? Because we will learn that today. Now, when you and I don't steward our influence, we can impact our family, yes. We can still impact the community. We can still impact the nation, but negatively, okay? Negatively, if we don't steward the influence that God has entrusted to us. What do I mean? Let's take a passage in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verses 10 to 12. It says here, All that generation also were gathered to their fathers, and there arose another generation after them 
who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. Then the sons of Israel did evil in the, eye, in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Now the context of this passage, you know, the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. Okay? They were able to, to, to enter the land that God promised them. Remember, they, they journeyed out of the land of Egypt, and then for, 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 for 40 years, they, 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 uh, in the wilderness, all right? And then finally, uh, Moses came, all right? And then Joshua became the successor of, of Moses. And here, there was a generation after Joshua. Joshua died already, okay? You know, uh, the days of, of Joshua, the elders, the fathers, it says here, the fathers, those are the elders, they were so faithful in following and obeying God, okay? Those who survived after Joshua. But after Joshua's death and those who helped him, the Bible says there arose another generation who know not God. What went wrong? Remember, from generation to generation, they were so uh, uh, diligent to, 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 to share to their children what God did when they went out of the land of Egypt, all right? Even Joshua, he was commanded by, by God, do not let this book depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. They were commanded to, to teach them diligently to your children. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Teach them to your children when you eat, when you sleep, when you rise, when you are lying down. In, in short, 24-7, you teach them to your children. Okay? And then what happened? Arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord. Is it possible? It's possible. It happened. <laughs> all right? Is it possible nowadays? It is. It is possible. And for me, this is one of the most tragic events in the Bible and in the history of Israel. One of the most tragic event, events. Okay? Friends, when we don't steward our influence, we can lose an entire generation. That's a warning for all of us. If we neglect influencing our children today, the next generation, we will lose them. Next, next generation, of course, we will lose them, all right? And that's what exactly happened to the one generation in Israel after the death of Joshua and his generation who were faithful to God, all right? And if we want to be positive influencers for God, specifically for God, part of being an influencer for the Lord is to recognize the influence that God has entrusted to you and me. We have to recognize our influence. This is you, and then you have your inner circle, you have your intermediate circle, and you have your outer circle. Do you have friends? Do you? It's impossible if you don't have friends, right? Of course you do, okay? You know, if, if, if you are this one in the middle, and you have your inner cir circle, this is your, your family, this is your, your closest friends, in Filipino, we call this barcada, okay? Burks, all right, the Burks, all right? Inner circle, and they're here, your intermediate circle. These are, these are the people that, that you work with, okay? People that you do transactions with. Maybe it could be your classmates, it could be your workmates, it could be the people you, you usually work over the phone, over uh, email, all right, maybe these are your suppliers in your work, maybe your gym buddies, your basketball buddies that you regularly, regularly uh, meet together, you, you play together, meaning you, you know each other, you have relationship, okay? This can be your, your, the people around you that you share, with, you, you share your hobbies with, all right? So you have influence, right? You have intermediate circle, right? Do you? Of course, you do have. And you have a good relationship with these people. Now, the outer circle, these are the people that most likely, they are just acquaintances, okay? You just, uh, maybe it could be your, your neighbor, you just say hi, hello, all right? Maybe the, 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 your neighbor 
to the next corner of your community, all right? or maybe in the workplace, you still have these people, the outer circle that you, you don't really have that kind of relationship. The people that you just uh, meet regularly in, in groceries, okay? these are the, the outer circle in your sphere of influence. Okay? Well, sometimes they are your social media friends. Okay? Do you have 500 friends in social media, at least? If you have 500 friends, 200, 300, you have outer circle friends for sure. All right? And all of us have this kind of relationship. I do believe all of us have. Now, I want you to think and pray that as you listen to this message, who are these people? Okay, think about this. Who are these people that God has entrusted to you for you to become an influence to? Your inner circle, of course, you have your own family, you have your siblings, you have your husband, you have your wife, you have your children, you have your close friends, maybe it could be, it could be your relatives. Of course, you have your intermediate circle. Okay, think about these people and how could you influence them as we listen to the message of the Lord. Now, after knowing who are those people that you have influence with, you have to exercise your influence. You have to exercise your influence. This is you, your inner circle, your intermediate circle, your outer cir circle. You exercise your influence to who? You influence them to? To God. Not to yourself, but to God. Why? Because all of us, whether we know it or not, every time we act, you know, every time we say something, every time, whether we are, whatever we do at school, at work, our behaviors, whatever it is, okay, we are either pointing people towards Jesus Christ, and that's what it means to exercise your influence, or <laughs> we are just pointing them to ourselves or to nothing or to the world. We are just pointing them to the world. That's the worst thing to do. Influencing your circle to the world. But as followers of Christ, we should influence them for the Lord, okay? So we are either positively influencing people towards Christ or we are not, okay? Think about that. Showing, if you are, we are showing bad examples to them. We are not Christ-like, okay? So we are just pointing them to the world. And that's why Jesus is saying that you are the salt of the earth. Okay, you still remember this? You are the salt of the earth. Jesus tells us that we are the salt of the earth. Who is the salt of the earth? You, me, all of us, okay? Don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> look at yourself. You are the salt of the earth. It's you and I. And you know, in the times of Jesus, they understood the importance of salt, okay? And today, we take salt for granted. Why? Because we are so rich with salt, okay? And I want you to imagine in the days of Jesus how important salt is. Without salt in the time of Jesus, you will not survive. This is a kind of review from our Beatitude series. You know the ancient uses of salt? They are used for preservative, antiseptic, flavoring, for sacrificing, and we have heard also that the, 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 wor the, the, the salt is, is a, a mode or medium for salary during their time. They work for someone, and this, the boss will pay them salt because salt is so precious during that time, and that is why we got the word salary. Sal means salt from Latin word, salary, because salt during that time is so, so valuable. And when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, it talks about your value and your usefulness. You are valuable. You are useful in your influence, in your circle of influence. Yes, in those days, salt was a valuable commodity, okay? And the values of salt lies in its effect on its surroundings. And it tells us that as disciples of Jesus, God should use us to impact and influence people around us, influencing them for the Lord. So when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, 
one of the things that we do as salt is we help preserve. We preserve what? Not only we do preserve, but we add flavor. Okay, we add flavor. You have to ask yourself, who are these people in my inner circle? As I have said, it's your family, it's your inner circle, okay, your, your immediate circle. Okay, who are these people that you, can, you could be salt to? You know, when you talk about salt, there's, there's a di- direct application to something, like for the meat, if you want to preserve the meat, you apply it, you put the salt on it. So it's a close contact. So in your inner circle, your in- intermediate circle, you have close contact with. So you'll be the salt of the earth. How would you influence them for the Lord? And what does it mean to be salt? It means that God has given you, God, as, as, as two words of this influence, God is expecting us to make a difference, to impact the lives of those people in our inner circle. How was your experience being salt of the earth? In your family, in your, in your close friends, all right? Are you showing them real joy, the joy of the Lord, the fruit of the Spirit, okay? Being patient <laughs> with your words, with your actions, the way you behave. Are you being the salt in your inner circle? Are they experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Ask yourself. Why? Because there's a problem if we are not doing our part. Because it says here, if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Now, can salt become less salty? Strictly speaking, no, it will not, okay? Sodium, uh, sodium chloride, right? Uh, chemists here, you, you are, any chemists here? Sodium chloride. It is a stable compound. It can never become uh, less salty in itself. But you know what? Even if, if, if you heat it, uh, if you put it on water, the water will become salty, right? But you know, there is one thing that can make it remove its taste, tastiness as being salty. You know, what's that? Impurities. If you mix with impurities, the salt, it becomes tasteless, okay? It becomes useless. So much so that just be trampled by and thrown out by men. Useless. Not good at all, okay? And so the word of warning for you and me is don't let any impurity enter in your, into your life. Don't let any impurity enter into your life because you are the salt of the earth. And as we ask ourselves, what are the impurities in my life? What are the impurities that am I or are you allowing in my life? Think about that. Remember, you you and I, we are just humans. We are human beings, okay? We are easily influenced. And I myself, I am easily influenced, right? And so you have to ask yourself these questions. Who is, who is influencing you? What are you watching, eh? listening to? Where are you spending your time? Those questions. Yes, I want to be an influencer for the Lord, but ask yourself, who is influencing me? Social media. What are influencing you? TikTokers, okay? Nothing wrong with those things. I'm not saying those, those things are, are bad. It's okay. As long as you influence people for the Lord. What are you watching, okay? What are you reading? What are you listening to? Where are you spending your time the most? We talk about that, the importance of, of uh, being good stewards of time a few Sundays ago right? Where are you spending it? Okay. Now, who are the people you're following? Who are these people you are following? And whoever you follow, you get information, of course, and material from that person that you are following. You will be, you are being influenced. Okay. Who are you following? Okay. You know, I, I myself, I like 
watching pranks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pranks. Because by, by nature, I, I like pranks even before this social media world came out. Even when I was still a kid, I like pranks. I am pranking my siblings, right? And then I didn't realize what prank is until social media came. Oh, that's why. Uh, uh, when I was a child, I like prankings. Okay? But those things are, are not bad. But if you are using those things that you are drifting the people away from God, that's the thing that it's not good at all. That's why we maximize social media, we maximize the resources that we have to influence people for God. Now, another question is, who is your inner circle? Who are your closest friends that are influencing you? Yes, you are, you are to influence people, but remember, the Bible says, bad company corrupts good morals. Okay, so think about that. Who are your inner circles? It doesn't mean that uh, you, you run away from them. You don't, you don't have to fellowship with them. No, okay? But be just be, be very, very careful. Why? Because it doesn't matter how good person you are. The thing is, you will be influenced in some way or another. You know what? In the Bible, there's a story. There's a person in the name of King Rehoboam. Are you, are you familiar with King Rehoboam? He's the successor to his father, King Solomon, and a grandson of King David. He was the king of Judah for 17 years. Okay? Now, uh, what's the story behind this, King Rehoboam? You know, the, the other danger about not becoming a good steward or stewarding our influence is, you know what, when, is this, when, when King Rehoboam became king, it was a transition from King Solomon to him. It's a transition, okay? So this is what the people were dealing with during the time of Solomon. The people were complaining during the time of Solomon. Why? Because they were complaining how hard, for, how hard Solomon had made it for them. The works, the labors, okay? He was dri driving them too hard. The people were complaining. The country had become very prosperous, but the people were being driven too hard. And so... Here, in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 10, King Rehoboam consulted with the elders. Remember, he was the successor. He consulted the, with the elders who had served his father Solomon while he was still alive, saying, how do you counsel me to answer these people? Remember the, the situation? They were complaining because there were hard labors, all right? And then, these elders, the elders that, uh, who serve uh, King Solomon, they spoke to him, to King Rehoboam, saying, if you will be kind to these people and please them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. That was the advice that was given, okay? The older advisors gave King Rehoboam wise counsel to honor the people's request and thus win their loyalty. That's the purpose. But, but, but you know what? Guess what did Rehoboam do? Look at the next verse. But he forsook the counsel of the elders which they had given him and consulted with the young men who grew up with him and served him. So instead of listening to the elders, he was influenced by his buddies. Okay? Hey, buddy, what are you going to tell me, man? All right? So the people that had grown up with him, he was asking their counsel. Now, what was the advice? Advice? of his bodies. Look at this. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king had directed, saying, return to me on the third day. The king answered them harshly, and King Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the elders. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young man, man saying, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it my father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. He didn't listen to the wise counsel of the elders, but instead to the young men that he had grown up with. And not wise counsel. Young men foolishly told the new king to threaten even harsher conditions to the people. And you know, Rehoboam took the young men's advice 
He listened to them. And what happened? The people rebuilt, abandoning the house of David, and ultimately making Jeroboam their king. There was a revolution against him. And Jeroboam was the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And the Bible describes the reign of Jeroboam to have commenced following a revolt of the 10 northern Israel tribes against Rehoboam. 10 tribes versus Rehoboam. Why? Because he did not listen to the wise counsel of the elders. And it split Israel into two. The Judah, two tribes became loyal to Rehoboam, and 10 tribes became loyal to Jeroboam. The nation of Israel split and they experienced great consequences. Why? Because Rehoboam was influenced by his friends. You see here, when we listen to the wrong influence, we can jeopardize the future. When we listen to the wrong advice, to the wrong influence of the people around us, we could jeopardize, could be our future marriage, could be our future family, our children, okay? The question is, who is influencing you? How are you influencing others in your, your inner circle, your intermediate circle? If someone will ask you for, for an advice, maybe if you have family problem, maybe you have a marital problem, or whatever problem between husband and wife relationship, or from a, a, a parent and a child relationship, okay? If someone asks you, what are you going to counsel them? How are you going to influence them for the Lord? Or are you going to ask counsel from those people who will say, ah, you know what, forget about your husband. Ah, forget about your wife. Okay? Forget about your child. He's already grown up. Okay? But if you will listen for the wise counsel of godly people, you will never go wrong if they will give you counsel from the word of God. And that's why you and I, we must be positive influencers for the Lord. We must make a difference. Okay? How about parents? Are you influencing your children with good habits? Especially nowadays, with digital world, our, our children love uh, spending time with, with gadgets for 12 hours. I'm just exaggerating. But my, my point is, they love they love to spend so much time in uh, YouTube, social media, as young as they are. But how are you influencing them with their habits, with their, with their words, with their attitudes, with their characters? Being responsible at home, how are you influencing them? Okay? How about us, the group leaders? How are we influencing our inner circle, our discipleship group? Are we influencing them with our characters, of Jesus Christ, becoming more and more humble each day, modeling them what true Christ-likeness is? Are we influencing them? Okay? Now, here's another story in the Bible. For sure, you, you, you know this, this story. And there's a baby here. You know him, right? He is Moses, okay? He is Moses. You know Moses, he was born uh, during the time when the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, made a decree. What was the decree? Kill all the male babies. Okay, remember during the time the Israelites were, were, were in the, the territory of, of the Egypt, in Egypt, and they were uh, growing so fast. Their population is growing so fast, fast, okay? And you know, Pharaoh said, ah, you know what, this is not good. So he ordered to kill all Hebrew male children at birth. Why is that so? At the time of Moses' birth, the number of Israelites in Egypt had grown up immensely, and the Pharaoh has, was so concerned they would come to overpower him, the Egyptian, Egyptians. And since the men tended to be stronger than the women, he ordered all male infants to be drowned in the Nile River in order to avoid the... the forecasted uprising, okay? He was forecasting, 
okay? Now, when Moses was born, his mother, not wanting him to be killed, placed him in a basket. Okay, we are now having our next-gen school here, okay? They put him on a basket, the, uh, the, the parents, the mother, and they set him out onto the river. Now, eventually, the Pharaoh's daughter heard Moses crying, okay, in the basket. So she, she, she had her maid draw him out of the water. Wow, this is a beautiful baby, okay? So, and after that, what happened? This is just a, this is just a summary of the story, okay? And, you know, the, 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 the Pharaoh's daughter hired, okay, a maid, okay? And you know what? Who was that person? She hired as the maid, okay? The mother of Moses, okay? And you know who is the mother of Moses? She was mentioned in the book of Numbers. She was Jochebed. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Amram Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. Why am I sharing this? Because it is Mother's Day, okay? It's Mother's Day. This is for you moms, mothers. Think about the influence of mothers in this story. The mother of Moses, Jochebed. Okay? Moses' mother, he was, she was a Levite. She was a Levite. The tribe of Israel, it says here. The daughter of Levi. And you know what? Very little said is said about Jochebed and her care for Moses. If you read, you read the, the story in the account of Moses' birth. But we can look at this story and consider the impact of the mother of Moses. Look at this in, in Exodus 2.10. And Moses grew. Of course, he was expected to grow up, all right? From baby, growing up. And she, the mother, brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she named him Moses and said, because I drew him out of the water. In short, Moses grew up. Okay? And like me, I didn't grow up. Okay? But Moses did. The Bible tells that Moses grew up as a child. All right? Now, the Bible is silent about the specific age of Moses when his mother handed him back to, to Pharaoh's daughter. It, what, it, it was not mentioned in the Bible how old was Moses. But you know what? We know that the early years of a child's life is a very formative years. One to five, one to six, one to seven, those years are formative years for children, for their values, for their habits, for their characters, for their attitudes, all right? Now, we don't know how long, all right? We don't know how long. The Bible didn't say how long uh, Moses was with uh, his mother, Jochebed. But we can know that Moses would not have become the greatest leader of the Hebrews if his mother had not taught him the Hebrew faith. Jochebed must have faithfully taught Moses until she took him to Pharaoh's daughter. And you know what? When Moses became old, when he first encountered God, when was that? He encountered God in the story of the burning bush, right? In Exodus chapter 3, Moses' birth was, Moses, the account of Moses' birth was, was in Exodus chapter 2. And here, Moses was already a uh, grown-up old man, and he said, and, and God said to him, I am the God of your father. Remember when he uh, met uh, uh, God uh, through the burning bush? God said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Now notice here, Moses didn't ask God, even if you read the Bible, uh, Moses didn't, didn't, ask, didn't ask God, uh, Lord, uh, who are these people? Uh, who are these? Who, are, who is my father, God? Uh, who is Abraham, Lord? Uh, who is Isaac, Lord? Who is Jacob, Lord? Moses didn't ask. When God told him, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I do believe that Moses knew who these people are. Whose influence was that? His mother. He was influenced by his mother. He knew he was a Hebrew, even if he grew up 
being the, the adopted uh, son of, of uh, the, the daughter of Pharaoh. He knew he was a Hebrew. And once Moses was living in the palace of the Pharaoh, maybe he was slightly uh, taught by the best teachers in Egypt. Of course, this is Pharaoh, right? And given one of the best education by man's standards, of course, by the standard of, of men. But you know what? One thing is certain from the education of the, the, the Egyptians, okay? There was no teaching about God and Hebrew faith. They will never, because they were not children of God. But the faith of his mother, Jochebed, impacted him greatly. Imagine that. The faith of his mother impacted him greatly. And you know what? In a Jewish culture, in a household, Jewish household, the wife and the mother is, is the mainstay of the home. Okay? The mothers are the mainstay of the home. It is she who largely determines the character and atmosphere of the entire home. You see that? The culture of the Jews. So under the influence of Jochebed and his, her teaching, she shaped the belief of Moses. She shaped the belief of Moses, who God is, that God is the creator, that God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Okay? Even Moses' character, the gentle character of Moses, is proof of his mother's holy guidance. And you know what? Moses, if you read the Bible, he was mentioned as the most humble person. The most humble person. And perhaps that could be because of how his mother molded him, his character, his faith, being a Jew. Jochebed, he influ- as a godly mother, he influenced Moses, the great person, one of the greatest persons in the Bible. So those must have been precious years by Jochebed spending time with Moses. Years she had to love and influence her child for God. And those early years, preschool years, remember, as I have told you, those are formative years, okay? That made an, in, an, an undeniable uh, impression on Moses from his mother, Jochebed. And I imagine he learned about the patriarchs, right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, maybe like the, the, our Sunday school there. Maybe I, there's no picture that there's no camera, right? Maybe she was just telling them, you know, our father, Abraham, this is our lineage. We are just descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, of course, Joseph. And the promise that, that they will be brought to, to the land uh, that God has, uh, will, will, will give them, okay? And perhaps he'll learn what it means to have faith in God and being fearless, being courageous. Maybe he'll learn that from his mother. And perhaps Jochebed's greatest uh, virtue was her success in imparting to Moses the virtue of trusting God. Because when, when God talked to Moses, he trusted God that he will be the one to initiate, to help his fellow Hebrew to bring them out of the land of Egypt. He obeyed God. So mothers, Okay, that's a wonderful example from the Bible. Of course, there are many uh, influential mothers in the Bible. Mary himself, the mother of Jesus, she was uh, a Jew who influenced Jesus as he was growing up. The Bible is telling us that Jesus grew in stature and wisdom. All right? So what's our message for today? Be an influencer for God. Influencing for the Lord is, you know what, it's not only by speech, but, but most importantly, in our conduct, in our conduct, in our behaviors, in our attitudes. You know, when you talk something, what you do, there must no disconnect as followers of Christ. Because when you are saying something and you're not doing it, there's this disconnection. And you know, the people will not believe in us. Okay? You know, we are also stewards of the truth. The word of God, we have, we have the truth in us. We have to influence people for God. But you know what? If that truth is not seen in us, that truth will not influence other people. 
we must leave them out. We must leave out the truth that is in us so that we could influence the people for God. We must represent Christ all the time, 24-7. First at home, because if you just pretend you're Christ-like outside the home and you're not at home, you will, not, you will have no credibility. Okay? Influence first your inner circle and then influence the other uh, people that God has entrusted you. All right? So you are the salt of the earth. And Jesus continued, you are the light of the world. Okay? You and I need to imagine what it was like to hear those words from Jesus during his time. And in those days, you know, cities are usually on the top of a hill in the time of Jesus. And there is light on top of that. And do you know how precious light is during the time of Jesus? Very precious. But today, again, we take light for granted because uh, it's, e- it's so easy. We can turn on the switch, on and off, and then there's light, okay? To start a fire in their time, it's so hard. But today, we have a match. We have uh, automatic, uh, what do you call that, with a gas, right? So fire is no, no longer a precious commodity, okay? And so when Jesus says, you are the light of the world, the meaning that comes with that is you are so valuable. Why? Because the world today is in darkness. And you and I have a purpose. We are to shine. We are to shine in this dark world. You see, light is seen even from a distance. And the smallest light, even if it's very tiny, can dispel the greatest darkness. However, Even though you and I were made to be light of the world, we have a choice. What's our choice? It says here, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Now, this verse shows us that it is impossible for somebody to actually put it under a basket. It's nonsense, right? You lit a light, and you put it under the basket. It makes no sense, okay? And as followers of Jesus, when people see you from afar, ask yourself, do they see the light from afar? Do they see someone who is different because of God? You know, in this world, there are a lot of things today that we are so tempted to compromise uh, because everyone is doing it I will also do it. Because uh, premarital sex is okay, I will do it anyway. It's acceptable in the world. Right? We must shine the light because you are the light of the world. You and I. And that's what it means to be light of the world. You make a difference for God. So your intermediate circle, okay? Do you stand out? in your intermediate circle, young people, okay, in your school, okay, can, you, can they see the difference in you? Oh, this person is so diligent in studying. He, he's doing his best. Why? Because, you know, you are doing it for the Lord, all right? You're not lazy. In your workplace, if everyone is gossiping, are you participating? Okay. Uh, just once a day. Once a day lang, okay? So beware, all right? Because we should be light of the world, okay? In in the gym, okay? In the grocery, on the road. Uh, There you go, on the road. If somebody cuts you, how do you respond? Do you react or do you respond? Okay, I'm not excused to that, okay? I'm not an excuse to that. Somebody will cut me. I'm always tempted to honk my horn. Okay. And I will just think, ah, maybe this person has a butterfly on his stomach, okay? That's why he's rushing, driving, all right? So you have two options. Either you turn on the switch or you turn it off, all right? As the light of the world. Remember, the message is to be influencer for the Lord, not to be an influencer for yourself, but influencer for the Lord. It's for the Lord. And how can you do that? 
Jesus tells us, then Jesus again spoke to them saying in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. For those of you who, who, who follow Jesus and is a follower of Jesus, a professing follower of Jesus, it says here, Jesus is the light of the world, and if Jesus is the light of the world, he is in you, and you must walk in light because he is the light of the world. Now, our world is in darkness, and without Jesus, we too will walk in darkness. We'll be stumbling, we'll be tripping, okay, because we cannot see. And the people around us, they are blinded if they don't have Jesus in them because they don't have the light of life. And all of us who are followers of Christ, because we have the light of life, we are the light to them. We are the light of the world. So to follow Jesus is to prayerfully ask, what would Jesus do or say in this situation? And then to do, to do it in his power, because you are the light of the world. And as we obey Jesus, because he is the light of our lives, then we will enable this light to shine in us so the people will see. Okay? And you know, we live in a world that is broken, that is dark, that is decaying, morally decaying, spiritually decaying. What are we doing? Are we setting us a good example? And God wants you to use that influence that he entrusted to you to help point people to God. And how can we be an influencer for God? There's a passage, the letter of Apostle Paul to, to his disciple, Timothy. In chapter 4, verse 12, he said to Timothy, let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example to those who believe. Now, while this is given to, the, to young Timothy as leader of the church, it also applies to us as followers of Christ. Okay? We have to set ourselves as an example because it applies to all his followers. Example on what? In speech. Be an influencer for God in speech. Let your conversation season with salt. Paul said that in Colossians, all right? Paul said also in Ephesians, do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But what? But only things that is helpful to build up those people who are listening, okay? To those who are uh, in, in need of, of, of those words that will encourage them, that will benefit those who listen. Be an example in speech. If we are going to be influencers, we need to be known as people whose words reflect the hope and encouragement found in Christ. The way we say, the way we talk, the Parents, the way we talk to our spouse, to our wives, to our husbands, are we shouting with each other? When our, our, our children will look at us, oh, that is how Christ, Christ-like person behaves, right? Are we an example in our speech? And then be an example in conduct, in your behavior, in your characters. The minute we claim to be Christians, the people around us start paying atten- attention to our behaviors. They will pay attention to your behavior. They want to know if it's all the talk or if we are serious with what we are talking. They may never tell you that they are watching you, but the truth is they are. They are observing you, the people around us, especially those who do not know Christ. We are the Bible to them. And while they are watching us, make sure we are setting as an example in conduct. But you know what? This doesn't mean that we have to be perfect, okay? We have to be sinless. We could never be because we are still sinners. We are in this fallen world, and we will still uh, fall short sometimes with God's standards in our conduct. But you know what? When we stumble, okay, it's authenticity. We acknowledge our mistakes, we acknowledge 
our, 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 our wrongdoings. And then we recommit to faithfulness. We repent and then we show them that we change because Christ is in us, okay? It is authenticity. The same thing in the family. When you make a mistake, apologize, right? And never do it again, okay? And then be intentional in, in exemplifying Christ-likeness, exemplifying humility. So it's not our flawless behavior that people are looking for. It's our sincerity. It's our authenticity. And when we are transparent about our mistakes and demonstrate a genuine desire to do better, it has an impact to the people around us, to our sphere of influence. And then be an example in love. The best example of love is who? Jesus himself. Unconditional love, selfless love, sacrificial love. Let's follow that kind of love that Jesus showed during his earthly time. Sacrificial love. as what we have heard from Brother Randy. I will go to the point of death. You deny yourself. You deny your rights. Okay? Regard others as more important than yourself. Okay? Why? Because if we are unable to demonstrate Jesus' love, nothing else will say or do matters. We might have an exceptional understanding of Christian truths, the faith to work miracles, okay? and the commitment to selfless charity, whatever it is, service in the community. But if the people cannot see love in us, it's worthless. It's worthless without love. And then, be an example in your faith. That's what we have learned from the examples a while ago, especially for the mothers. Be an example of someone with faith, okay? You know what? Being an example of, of someone who has faith, it is more than believing that God exists. Faith demonstrates a certainly about who God is, and it is a conviction that no matter what is happening in our lives, no matter what you are going through, God is at work bringing good out of it. You know what? In this world, we always have trouble. Jesus promised that one, right? When we hit a, a, a roadblock or struggle, do we fall apart? Or is our confidence found in something deeper and more profound? Are we being an example of having faith? Are we being an example of a person who is obeying God no matter what because of faith? So be an example in faith. And then be an example in purity, okay? Being pure in heart, pure in your thoughts, pure in your words, Pure in everything. Purity. Be an example, especially to the young people today. You know what? Sharing the gospel requires more than telling people about Jesus. Why? Because we have to demonstrate what lives that should look like as followers of Christ, and that is being submitted to Jesus, surrendered to Jesus. A life that is surrendered to who Jesus is, following him in his conduct and everything. We're not trying to pretend here that we are, we are perfect, okay? But we need to remember we are on display. We have to be intentional that we are on display, being examples in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Why? Because the world is looking at us to see if the things we profess to believe are having an impact in our lives. As what I have said a while ago, there must be connection with what we believe, with what we say, to what we are doing. There must be connection. And we cannot demonstrate what it is. We cannot demonstrate what it is when we don't influence others for Jesus. So we must influence them because we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the earth. And we are commanded by Jesus to let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When you are an influencer for the Lord who is being glorified, according to this verse, God, our Father, not yourself, okay? Why? Because if it is yourself, something is wrong. 
something is wrong if you are glorifying yourself. It should be God. God should be glorified. Now, if you want to really be intentional in influencing others for the Lord, because we are just stewards of this influence, when we die, how can you influence someone? The best time is today to influence the people around you. So if we are intentional in influencing others for the Lord, ask God, pray. Ask God daily, Lord, can, can, can you make me an influence or an influencer for the people that surround me, first in my family and then in my closest friends, wherever I am, the intermediate circle. Lord, can you help me? Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. You, you rely on the Holy Spirit all the time because you and I have this supernatural power in us. And the result of being filled with the Holy Spirit is, is what again? You will be loving. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit, okay? You ask the Holy Spirit to fill you and rely on Him. And then you model authentic Christ-likeness. That's why we always emphasize here that we make disciples, okay? We make disciples because that is where we teach someone to be transformed into the image and characters of Jesus. Okay? And continue to journey with the people in your sphere of influence. Don't run away from them. Continue to journey. And then as you journey with them, do this cycle. Lord, can you, can you help me to be a good influencer? Lord, can you fill me with your, with your Holy Spirit? And when you make mistake, be authentic. All right? Show to them what a true Christ-like person is. The reality of who God is, of who Jesus is, you know, that must be seen in our lives. So what's our message for today? Be an influencer for God. What are we influencing others to others nowadays? What are you influencing them? Are we influencing them for God? Do we love others as well? Do our lives reflect the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit who is in us? Okay. You know, wherever you go, wherever we go, whether at home, at work, whether sharing at the internet, social media, you have the blessing of influencing others. And we are just towards of that influence. Influencing others to know Jesus by reflecting his image through the power of the Holy Spirit who is living in you. And I hope and pray that all of us, we know how to influence people because by nature, we are influencers. But I hope and pray that we will be intentional to influence people for God, whatever form it is, whatever way it is, the way we behave, the way we talk, in our conduct, the way we show to them. Let's represent Jesus all the time so that we will point them to God and God, our Father who is in heaven, will be glorified. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you, O God, for reminding us that we are the salt and light of this earth. And Lord, you have saved us for this purpose. You did not save us for nothing. You save us, O oh God, so that we will influence people for you. And Lord, as stewards of this influence, Lord, I pray that we will be faithful in this area of our Christian lives, O oh God. That wherever we go, whatever we do, Father, we will point people to you. And if there is an opportunity for us, if they see the difference in us, they might, they might be wondering what's in us. Lord, help us to share to them the gospel message of salvation. And help us, Father, that as we profess to be followers of yours, there will be no disconnect in the way we behave. 
Lord, we pray. Lord, it's not easy, O oh God. We cannot do it on ourselves. Help us, Lord, to fully rely on the power and yielding to the leading of your Holy Spirit who is in us. And help us to obey every time, Father, your Holy Spirit will convict us of something that is not glorifying to you, especially when it comes to influencing people for you. Lord, wherever we are, in our workplace, at school, in our family, in this daily life, oh God, I pray, Father, that we will be intentional in becoming more and more like Christ because the people are always watching us. And as they look at us, Father, we pray that indeed they will see Jesus in us. And Lord, we pray for those people who are, who are here today. If they are not even sure that they are the light and salt of this earth, you said that you are the light of life. Help them, Father, to surrender to you. Help them, Father, to recognize that they cannot be salt and light of this world if they don't have Jesus in their lives. Lord, I pray that may you touch their hearts, O oh God. I pray that they will recognize their need of you and that they will decide to follow you this day and for the rest of their lives. And Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your message, O oh God. I pray that we will be glad to apply this in our daily lives as we step out of this place, Father. And Lord, as we will have our fellowship this afternoon, I pray, O oh God, that your manifest presence will be evident in each and every one of us. We pray for your blessing for the rest of our time, O oh God. And we commit to you the rest of our time this afternoon, and we bring back all the praises, all the glory, all the honor that is due unto your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen.